Well, welcome back. You are looking at Cowgirl Miss Doherty here on Halloween Eve, ready to talk to you about podcast number one for chapter five, The Electrons and Atoms. Now, I know it's Halloween, but this is like a five-minute podcast, and my expectation of my students is that when you walk through the door on Friday, all hyped up from that sugar rush from the night before, you're going to be able to answer about five or six very simple questions on a very short little quiz. So be ready to go on this. Now we're studying the electrons and atoms and the locations of electrons and atoms is going to determine a whole bunch of chemistry, which is why we spend so much time on this little bit of nothingness that moves at the speed of light that has almost no mass and yet is so important to understand. So before we can understand the placement of electrons and atoms, we need to get a few concepts under our belt. And that first one is, let's talk about wave-like behavior. So any kind of energy that exhibits a wave-like form, an oscillating behavior as it travels through space, is called a wave. Here is a picture of wavelength being represented. Now we're going to give a name to this distance from the crest of one wave to the crest of another, or some books call it from the trough or the bottom of one wave to the bottom of another, but we're going to go top to top here. That's called the wavelength. On a quiz, as you come in the door on the next class um, session, you should be able to label what is the correct wavelength on a simple diagram like this. Now, chemists like to use chemical formulas or mathematical formulas. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is we're going to label this wavelength, the distance from the crest of one wave to the crest of another, with the Greek symbol lambda. That's lambda. L-A-M-B-D-A. It kind of looks like an upside down Y, I think is the best way to describe it here. And that upside down Y, not sure where that guy came from, represents once again the distance from one peak to the next peak. So we call that wavelength. We also have a term though that can measure how many waves pass by us in a second. You pretend that you have superhuman vision and you can see those radio waves that pass by you. So if I could see and count how many go by every single second, I've measured the frequency. Here is a symbol for frequency. It's the Greek letter nu, N-U. Looks like a V, but it's a Greek letter nu. And it used to be called cycles per second. They've turned that term into a hertz. If you have a hertz or one hertz, not a car rental agency, a unit of measurement for frequency, it means that if you have one hertz, one wave passes by every second. So you may have heard that term hertz in a context, say, like megahertz, which has to do, I believe, with the processing power of computers. So we have two properties of waves. They have a length and they have a frequency. And be able to know the name, the Greek symbol, and how to label correctly if you saw a diagram such as this. Now those two substance or those two measurements are connected to each other in a very interesting way. I think you can probably figure out that if the wavelengths are really long, very few will pass by you in a second. A radio wave would be a good example of that. And if the wavelengths are really, really short, then a whole bunch of them can pass by you in one second. And that be some, might be something scary like x-rays or gamma waves. So what you're seeing here is a mathematical expression that is an indirect or inverse proportion. We just said if waves were big, frequency is small. If wavelength is small, frequency is quite large. Those two are opposite to each other. When one value changes in the opposite direction from a given value, that's an inverse proportion or relationship. So looking at this equation, mathematically, this letter here, C, stands for the speed of light. You may as well write it down. It's 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, or as they say, hella fast. So if the speed of light is a number that never changes, the speed of light is also the speed through which all kinds of electromagnetic radiation passes through space. Radio waves, which are big, and gamma waves, which are small, their size and frequency may differ, 
may be different, but their speed as they travel through space is the same. It's the same as the speed of light. So researchers found out that the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And if this number cannot change, if frequency gets larger, wavelength gets smaller. If frequency gets smaller, wavelength gets bigger, and vice versa. Inverse proportion is what you see mathematically represented in that box. So we just got done saying our velocity is equal to the frequency, that would be nu, times the wavelength, lambda. I thought I'd throw in here as a last little image, just a picture to give you an idea of how waves can differ greatly in size and therefore also in frequency. So if you're listening to a radio right now, those radio waves are hundreds of meters long sometimes and they pass through your house, and you for that matter, with any no damage whatsoever. Obviously we can listen to a radio. Long waves means really small frequency, only a few pass by in a second. But you do not want to be near x-rays or gamma rays because they have a really, really short wavelength. This is kind of old-fashioned terminology here. We don't use the letter F for frequency. We use the letter Greek letter nu. Short, teeny, tiny waves, a whole bunch of them can pass by you in a second. So if wavelength is small, frequency is huge. And these waves are quite dangerous because they're so small they can get inside cellular units and bounce around and do all kinds of damage. But the most important wavelength that the human being uses, being a visual creature, is the visible light. And as you can see in the whole range of the electromagnetic spectrum, the Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet wavelengths of visible light, they only occupy a tiny, tiny part of this huge spectrum of electromagnetic energy. But again, all forms of electromagnetic energy travel through a vacuum at the same speed, the same as the speed of light. Well, that's it. I hope you guys are ready for your quiz next time you walk through the classroom door. I'll say adios, partners. Take care.